hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Govinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm looking at Yale D by Sonosaurus, and this is a really cool reverse delay effect. I used it in my recent video on polyphase and I thought it sounded great there. And I thought, hmm, I think I should do a video on this. Um, it's not a complex app, so it's easy to get. So rather than making the focus today a tutorial, I thought it would be interesting to explore some creative uses for the app. Actually, as usual, as I was making this video, I explored this in ways that I hadn't really thought of before. And I'm sure you'd also have a lot more ideas about how this app could be used. So that'd be one cool thing if you'd like to share something in the comments section. If you have any cool ideas how to use the app, please let us know. Now, I have five copies of this to give away to subscribers to the channel and all the details of what you've got to do to win are in the pinned comment, pinned at the top of the YouTube comment section. If there is no pinned comment there by me, it means that I edited the comment and forgot to repin it. If that's the case, please just leave a comment and tell me, and then I'll repin the comment. Okay, so first we're going to listen to a few examples of this in action, and then in the rest of the video, I'll explain at least some of those examples, how I set them up. And as we do that, we'll also go through some of the main aspects of the app. Okay, let's get started. So I'll start this off without Yaldi, and then I'll just see Yaldi is bypassed here, and then I'll just bring it in and let you hear the difference, let you hear what it's adding. Okay, so let's go through some tips and tricks. First thing I'd like to mention, it can be really cool to remember that we can use this purely wet with no dry signal. So for example here, let's listen to a dry signal only. So here we've got Ravenscroft piano being played by Polyphase, by the way. So if I take the dry down completely and put the wet up, then we've just got a pure reversed signal, which can be really cool for doing ambient type stuff. And of course we can mix them together. Next thing I want to point out, don't forget that we can do cool stereo offset effects over here. So let's have a listen to that. We also get some nice tape type noises with that as well. You might not notice this if you're not wearing headphones. Headphones definitely recommended for this video. If you like ambient and stuff, this is really an essential delay, I would say. Okay, let's put this back to the middle and let's look at some other stereo effects we can do. So if we come over to this section, we have feedback and we can also cross pan the feedback. So basically sending the left signal 
into the right side delays and vice versa. So let me put up the feedback first. And let me cross pan it. So we can get some cool effects with this. Now, let's look at what I was doing in the drums example. So if we look at the interface for a second, we can see that we have a thing here, this one. So in the last examples, I didn't have this on, but in the audio examples at the beginning, I used this on the drums and I also used it on the harp piece. So I won't go over the harp piece again because the effect that I used is gonna be covered in this section. So if we turn on one shot, basically what we can do is instead of just having a delay that's just going all the time, we can very selectively turn on the delay at certain times. So one cool thing to do on drums is what I've done here with drum computer. So I've opened up the same preset in both instances of drum computer. But if you look down here, here I have muted certain channels in this one. And in this one, I've muted the other channels or it might be some crossover here actually, yeah. Anyway, play around with what you're going to mute and what you're going to solo in which instances and then put on different effects. So let's have a listen. So here I'm not using one shot, I'm just putting on a half a beat delay time on this second instance. And if we look over here, what I'm doing is putting on one shot. So let's have a listen to what that can sound like. I'll just take that delay off. So at the moment it's not applying any delay, but watch what I do here, one, two, three, four. So if you see, what I did there was I just held this record button down for two beats and then when I let go it then played that but in reverse. One, two, three, four. So this one shot can be really, really cool to just put in occasional little reverse effects at certain times when you don't want to put it on everything. And it's really nice just in general to put a couple of instances of these on the same drums, like I said, with different sounds soloed in different instances. And you can use that as crazily or as subtly as you want. It's a really cool effect. All right, let's look at something else. 
Now we're getting kind of near the end of the video everyone. Can I just ask you if you haven't done it yet, please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. Thanks a lot. All right, now um, let's look here what we've got. So first let's have a listen to this. So let's listen to this just dry completely. So we've got ice works or ice gear. <laughs> Mersenne being played by Polyphase put a nice delay on it and then using YLD to reverse everything so this is fully wet and I want to mention do not forget about the filter so let's say it's a bit too boomy. We can turn on the filter. We can take out some of those lows. Now, a really cool thing to do is, um, let's say you're making a kind of ambient track. Instead of just fading things, fading this in and out, you could actually use the filter as a fade. So you see, basically, I have cut out the sound completely here. And then we can just fade it in gradually. So you can hear now just the high frequencies coming in. Much more interesting than just doing a pure volume fade. But of course we can also use this to EQ things. For example, if we've got a lot of feedback on and especially if we're using dry and a wet signal, it might just be far too busy. And we might want to limit the frequency range of the delay. Now, of course, that volume fade could also start from the other side. So we start with just bringing in low frequencies. And finally, we get to high. And we can do some cool sound effects with this offset as well. Next thing I'd like to mention, delay times on this can go down really short. And that can completely change the character of the sound. When we bring it down really low, we get all kinds of crazy sort of resonant effects. And by the way, you can, of course, set up an LFO to modulate that delay time. Let's take a look. Here are uh, Yaldi's parameters all exposed in there. Now this sounds really cool with a bit of even tight crystals added. So beautiful.
Now, the final thing I want to mention is when you're using this with reverb, do experiment with where you place your reverb. Uh, for example, here I've got it in the more traditional way of putting the delay before the reverb, but it's also cool to experiment with putting the reverb before the delay and so on. So let's just have a listen to how that can change things. Let's take crystals off. You see how it's a much more rhythmic sound when we put the delay after the reverb. Same with crystals. I like crystals after the reverb. Because if we put the reverb after crystals, we lose quite a lot of the texture. Alright everyone, we've reached the end of today's video. I'll see you again soon. Take it easy.